Hello and welcome to this next episode in making your Oculus Quest game. So in today's session we're going to look at how we can add some controllers and add a little bit of interactivity. Um, but picking up where I left off on the last one, if I go into File and Build Settings I've now got my Oculus Quest plugged in. Um, so I was able to just press Refresh and then I could choose my Quest. So now when I press Build and Run it will now immediately, well not immediately, it will compile the APK and then it will copy it across as long as your quest is activated um, and it will start it will start playing on the quest straight away. Okay so let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this scene. So I want to leave that one as is. If you want to continue working you can but I always like to do incremental builds. So I'm going to go on to, on to edit and I'm going to duplicate. So I'm in sample scene one I'm just going to call this basic controller. So this is going to be our little test. I'm just going to double click it. You can see at the top it's now changed the new scene. So um, in a little while, I'm, well, in fact I'll do it now, right now, I'm going to click on the sphere. I'm going to add a rigid body. So you can see I've already started typing rigid body in. Um, so that's going to make it so it's it's got physics to it. It'll start moving, rolling round, acting like it's got collision detection. Um, I'm going to just choose a material because I think it looks a little bit dull. Um, like I said, because I've un I've installed all the Oculus thing, we've now got a bunch of tutorials to go at, a bunch of materials, sorry. So if I just scroll down, I think there's a pool ball, there's a pool ball, I'm going to drag that texture onto the ball, so it just looks a little bit nicer. I'm just going to move it over there for now, so it's kind of just out of our way. Okay, so we want to add some controllers, um, and the way to do that is to, is to add the controller prefab. So we've got our camera rig up here. If I just open this up into our tracking space, into our left hand and right hand. So we're going to attach a controller to the anchor and to the right hand anchor. I'm going to ignore the controller anchor for now. Um, so if I just go into Assets, Oculus, VR, Prefabs, and here we can see we have an OVR controller prefab. So if I just drag that onto the left hand anchor, then drag another one onto the right hand anchor, we can see it's just pretty below. I'm going to come onto the left hand, um, sorry, onto the controller prefab, we can see it's actually got the prefab for all the different kind of Oculus controllers. Um, if you leave that, you will literally see all of them on screen at once. So I'm just going to click on this and choose um, left hand touch, I think it's what I want. And I'm going to go to the right hand and choose the right hand touch. So now the thing for you to have a quick go at is, is try the building. So I'm just going to go on to build settings, I'm going to go build, so again, I've got my quest chosen, build and run. Uh, I'm just going to call this test three and press save. And now we'll start building that application. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add some interaction to this. So when we press the trigger, it does something. So I'm just going to come back up into my into my scenes folder. I'm just going to create a new script. So a new C sharp script. It doesn't seem to come up. Try that again. There we go. I'm just going to call this uh, simple interaction. We'll probably do something better later. Okay, so that's that loaded up. And the things I want to do is when we press the trigger, I want it to do something. Now, obviously there's lots of controls on there. So just to very quickly show you, there's a web page. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. But as I scroll down through this, it has all the different things that it can do. Um, the only one I'm really interested in is our raw axis left tr index trigger, because that's the line it's got, and I'll copy it across in a moment. Um, and if you look further down, it does label the whole lot, so you can have a good look at that and work out which button does what, so you can add it. But we're going to go into our code if it comes on. Let's just relaunch it. Uh, no, I don't want to upgrade. Okay, so that is our normal code. So if I was just go into here, um, I can... Um, so you don't have to see me typing the whole thing. I'm just going to copy and paste one of the file. So I've got float trigger left equals our our oculus vr input dot get oculus vr input raw axis 1d left index trigger uh, i'm sure you can probably figure out if we want to get the right trigger i can just copy that line change this to right and then where it says l put it to r so i'm now getting the value of what you've squeezed the trigger and this is going to be between zero and one and it's a float obviously because i searched there 
So now what I want to do is, I'm just going to do the right hand, like I said, I've only got the right hand turned on right now. If I just say if trigger right is greater than 0.9F, um, so if it's just, if it's almost fully squeezed, I want it to do something. Now in this case, I want to just spawn a ball into the middle of the platform. Um, so to do that, I can just go instantiate. I'll be lazy not to have the whole thing. Now, what am I going to instantiate? Well, I need to create something, so I'm just going to come back to that in just a moment. I'm going to comment it out so it's not there. Um, if I just put um, a game object, I'm going to call it ball. I can now instantiate that ball. Um, I'm going to, uh, yep, I need a position, so a new vector 3, because it's needs an XYZ. I'm just going to put it in the middle of the page, in the middle of the scene, sorry. Um, and now I need to know exactly what, what rotation is it. Now to do that, so it's got a zero rotation, I can just put a quaternion identity. So it's just going to be zero rotation at this point, because it can rotate through the X, Y and Z. And that just means it'll be all zeroed for now. So now if I do this, um, I'm just going to save that file. At the, at the moment, ball doesn't exist. So I just need to say public. Now... I've also made one of the mistakes, I should have done a different order. Because I've already made this, this snooker ball, this pool ball, a rigid body, it's no longer a game object. So if I click on that, um, in fact I'll just show you from... Well, I'll come back to that. So it's a rigid body. If I go back in here, I actually want to say it's a public rigid body instead. Um, and now it'll spawn that ball. Whenever we squeeze the trigger, it'll keep instantiating new balls on screen. Um, so if I do a quick uh, build, in fact, no, it's not going to work yet because I've not put, attached that code to anything. I'm just going to create a new game object. I'm going to call it uh, Game Controller. And by a game controller, I don't mean the controller in your hand. I mean this will control the overall game. So I can put all sorts of things into this file. If I just drag Simple Interaction onto that, so you can see Game Controller now has this. It should start coming up with the public. I didn't press Save. So if I come back into Unity, it'll now know I want, it wants a public object. Uh, no, like I said, this will keep coming up this message, and like last lesson, I won't say no. There we go, so it's got no rigid body. All I've got to do is grab that sphere and drag it on. So now it's linking that, and we can do that with any object. Um, so now, back in the cursor, a quick check. So I've got the rigid body, if I press the trigger, it's going to instantiate, yep, that's fine. So now I could go and test that again. So if I go via file, file, um, build settings, or I can just go straight to build and run now, and it'll do just that. It'll rebuild the APK, copy it across automatically, and you can go and test it. Okay, so now we've seen that, we should have seen that working now. As we squeeze the trigger, it just keeps spawning. While you're squeezing the trigger, it just keeps spawning and spawning. We don't want to do that because, you know, we, we, your quest going to eventually possibly get to the point where it might crash. What I want to do is, is, is only do it once per squeeze of the trigger like a real gun would work. So if I just go ball um, fire, because we're going to use this uh, variable in a later project, um, ball fire equals false. So right now you have not pressed the fire button, you've not pulled the trigger. So I'm going to come down here and just say if the trigger is greater than 0.9, so it's nearly squeezed in, and fire equal equals false, so we've not squeezed the trigger yet, we can instantiate the ball. But what I'm going to do now is say fire equals true. So if we were to go and test that code now, it would fire once, then that would be it. It would spawn one ball in the middle of the space, um, and that's it, I've done with. So what we could do with now is, I'm going to create some random variables. I'm just going to put, instead of note, I'm going to put random dot range, so we don't know where it's going to go to. Random dot range. Open bracket, and I want it to go between say minus three uh, and three. So it just puts somewhere around the space. I'm going to be lazy and just copy and paste that. And we make y at least one, so it's above the ground level. Um, okay. So now, whenever we press the trigger, it'll just randomly spawn it somewhere. Um, now, if you've gone and tested that, you should now be seeing you've got, to, you've got to squeeze the trigger, you get one ball, and that's it. Well, I want to just check that it's released. So now if I just go, if fire equal equals false, um, and I want to check if we've released the trigger. 
and trigger right is less than uh, 0.1. I mean, you might want to play about with these and see what feels comfortable for you. But I tested this earlier, this seemed to work quite nicely. I can say fire equals false. So it's making you squeeze the trigger in and making you release the trigger. There might be a more elegant way of doing it, but this will work. Obviously, please feel free to add the same code for the left trigger as well. So it could be a dual wielding. So now I'm going to press save on that. I can go back. And now hopefully, probably this has gone right. There we go. So I'm pressing the trigger. See, I'm pressing the trigger. If I don't press anything, nothing's happening. If I hold it down, I just get the one. As soon as I release. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. In our next one, we will be looking at how we can fire a projectile and maybe start to interact more with the surface. Okay, I shall see you in the next lesson.